Mohamed Fida. Ya. God bless saints. Amen. Amen. If we just um, spend a few moments just to pray, I'll just open us in Jesus' name. Most gracious and wonderful Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to be here. We thank you for life, health, and strength, dear Lord. And we just um, pray for all those um, that are in the building and those at home. We pray that you would just prepare our hearts to receive your word. And I just pray, dear Lord, that you would just direct my words, dear Lord, that they will be um, achieve your will, dear Lord, and your will will be done. And Father God in heaven, we just pray that you be glorified this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this is a bit strange for me, but I'm just going to do what I always do. Are you happy to be here, saints? Amen? Okay, so you can't shake your neighbor's hand, but can you just at least point an elbow and say, I'm happy to be here today? Amen. Now, they can't see um, you smiling, but can you just do it again and smile so they can see the creases in your eyes? Say, I'm happy to be here today. Amen. Amen. And happy to be at home with us as well, no doubt, as well. Um, so before I've got a short clip to play, but before I play the clip, I just want you to let you know that Brother John hasn't lost his mind. <laughs> yeah? It's to stimulate discussion. Amen. And I've already prayed that God's will is done. Is that okay? Amen. Okay, so if we could play the clip, please. There's a part of the Gospel of Mark where Jesus uses a racial slur. In Mark chapter 7, there's the account of the Seraphonician woman, a woman who is Syrian and Greek, both of which there were strong biases against within the Jewish community. And she comes to ask Jesus to heal her daughter who's possessed by a demon. And what is Jesus' response? He says, it's not good for me to give the children's food, meaning the children of Israel's food, to dogs. He calls her a dog. What's amazing about this account is that the woman doesn't back down. She speaks truth to power. She confronts Jesus and says, well, you can think that about me, but even dogs deserve the crumbs from the table. Her boldness and bravery to speak truth to power actually changes Jesus' mind. Jesus repents of his racism and extends healing to this woman's daughter. I love this story because it's a reminder that Jesus is human. He had prejudices and bias, and when confronted with it, he was willing to do his work. And this woman was willing to... Amen. No. That's fine. That's fine. Amen. Amen. So if we could get the slides out. So the title of today's sermon is Do Not Be Deceived. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not be deceived. Yeah. So if you're back at home as well, you have to t say to whoever's in the house, do not be deceived. Amen. So today I wanted to kind of um, go through a through a, um, few things. So one is I wanted to respond to some of the comments, or I put it here, lies. So some of the lies uh, mentioned in that little clip. Um, the next thing I wanted to do was to um, just touch on why it's so important for us to understand the gospel, why we have to be sure about what we believe in, and what our response should be when we understand the gospel. Amen. So um, we just had Resurrection Sunday. So a lot of us are well versed in the story of Christ. But why is it important that we understand it for ourselves? Amen? Amen. So um, one of the things, one of the, um, the one of the, um, I think one of the best things that Donald Trump did when he was in power was he created this new concept and it's called fake news. Amen? Because now he put it in our minds that we should look out for things that are fake, fake news. Amen? So, um, the Bible says this. The Bible says in um, Matthew chapter 24, which was read, it says, and Jesus answered them and said, see to it. So in the old translations, it will say, take heed or watch out. So see to it that no one misleads you. So we have to, it's actually a command. We have to look out and make sure that we're not deceived. Amen. 
And why should we do that? Well, because many will come in my name and they will say, I am the Christ. Amen. So Brother John comes with um, a blue suit, blue tie, blue shirt, and he says, I am the Christ. He says, see to it that you're not deceived. Amen. I am the Christ. And they will mislead some people, it says, doesn't it? It says many people. Amen. In fact, he goes on, as we read in verse 24, and it says, for false Christ, false prophets will arise and provide great signs, amen, and wonders so as to mis mislead, if possible, even God's chosen ones, amen. Point to yourself and say, I'm God's chosen one. So they want to deceive you, amen. They want to mislead you because you are God's chosen one. Okay, so like I said, I, I like Donald Trump for what he, that one term, fake news. Um, there's a lot of questionable things, but for this one term, um, tell me if you could see, um, if you notice something about this piece of news that is on the screen. So let's read it. So live from um, Tosh Road News Desk, it's saying here um, that Brother John is the fastest man on earth. Brother John beats Usain Bolt to become the fastest man on earth. And you can see the proof there. You can see I've beaten him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what am I saying by showing this picture? I'm saying that even though on the screen we saw the clip, they said that Jesus was prejudiced. Even though someone said something, even Christ says it in those scriptures, they will come to mislead you and they will even say that they are the Christ. They'll say that they are a, a righteous prophet. But even though they say these things, even though they'll do signs and wonders, be sure that they do not mislead you. So I don't want to mislead you. I am not the fastest man on earth. Amen. If I ran from here to the door, I'd probably pull a hamstring. <laughs> Amen. In the mornings now, I ache when I get out of bed. So I'm not beating Usain Bolt. Amen. Even retired Usain Bolt. Okay, so, first things first, we have to know that Christ is real, amen? And there's lots of proof, a lot of the proof is in the Bible itself, and people will say, well, if it's in the Bible, then it's, you guys are just deceiving yourselves. But, it's outside of the Bible, there are many people that hold to the fact that Christ is true, amen? So, in the Notre Dame Cathedral that um, recently burned a few years ago, um, they have what they call a, um, a, um, a crown of thorns. And they believe that to be Christ's crown, crown of thorns. That there's high security, they protect it because they believe that's the original crown of thorns. Whether that's true or not, we don't know, but the whole French government is protecting this thing, amen? So they believe that Christ is real, amen? Um, the Vatican, they have the Shroud of Turin, which is the linen burial cloth that supposedly has Christ's image on it. So it was placed on a body and they believe that that body was Christ and it has a print of him on it. Amen? And so they believe it, that that's that, yeah? Now those two things could be kind of just like one person's belief over another. But a true fact is point number three. Archaeologists have actually unearthed um, rock-hewn courtyards. So if I go back to the first image. They've actually unearthed images like this, so actual buildings like this, where people use for burials. So that is real. So when the Bible speaks about this 2,000 years ago, that's a real thing. Amen? They've also unearthed cisterns, so all the things, kind of things that were mentioned in the Bible, so they know that those things existed. Now, even for people that don't believe in the Bible, what they've also found is physical evidence of Roman cru crucifixions. Like, did they really kill people like this? Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say yes. Yes, they found Roman crucifixions or physical evidence of it. And there's a gentleman here, Flavius um, Jefferson, a Jewish historian, and he mentions Christ. He wasn't a Christian. He was a Jew. He didn't really believe in Christ, but even he mentioned there was a man and he had a brother named James. And this man was crucified by the Romans. So even he mentions it. Amen? And he wasn't a believer. Then in the annals of 
Emperor, Imperial Rome, um, just about 100 years after Christ was born, a Roman senator, a historian, Tacitus, he even says that, look, Emperor Nero falsely blamed the persons commonly known, called Christians. They were hated for their enormities. Christos, that is Christ Jesus, the founder of the name, was put to death by Pontius Pilate, um, procurator of Judea in the reign of Tiberius. So what is he saying? He's saying that there was a man named Pontius Pilate. He put to death this guy called Christ. And this guy called Christ had followers that were known as Christians, proving that Jesus is, is real. Someone at the back, give them a round of applause where you can. Amen, that Jesus is real. So let's just take a deep breath and release. All right, Jesus is real. Woo, feels so good. Because sometimes people might um, try and trick you that he's not real. Amen. Okay, so let's respond to some of the um, things that were said in that clip. Amen. Remember, the topic of today is do not be deceived. So let's look at some of the things. In, can anyone tell me the golden text in John 3.16? Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, young man, shout out. You're the only one, um, yeah, shout out. What did he do? He, he, what did he do? He really, yeah, he loved the world. Yeah, so I'll finish it for you because you haven't got a mic. That um, for God so loved the world, let me put it on screen so you can see it, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen? So, God loved just Brother John from Nigeria. He loved just Nigerians. He loved just Africans. He loved just the UK. Just the royal family. Must be just the royal family. Who did he love? Young man, shout out. Who did he love? The world. Amen. So is Jesus prejudice? Oh, you've got to say it louder than that so they can hear you at home. Is Jesus prejudice? No. God so loved the world. He gave his own son. Amen. That whosoever believed in him should have everlasting life. That we all might be saved. Amen. So we have to know this. Because some people will try and say, oh yeah, Jesus is prejudiced. Jesus likes some people more than others. No, he loved the world. Amen. Amen. Let's look deeper. Amen. So one of the things that was said... One of the things that was said was that the Gentile, um, the Seraphonician woman, she started challenging Jesus. So let's look at this. So it says, now, the woman was a Gentile, a Seraphonician of Seraphonician descent. And she repeatedly asked him, being Jesus, to cast out, cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, let the children be satisfied first. Amen. All right, then. So we say we are God's chosen ones. We're his children. Amen. So he's saying, let you obedient God's children be satisfied first. Amen. Now that first is important because it means there's going to be someone that is second. Amen. When I won my race with Usain Bolt, I was first and Usain Bolt was second. Amen. So Jesus is not saying that he doesn't love the lady. He's just saying that I want to first give to a um, young man that had his birthday, um, Ayo. So, no, that's Ayo. Dio, that's it, Dio. Dio should be first, amen? It's his birthday. Let him get the cake first, amen? And then everyone else can have cake. So he's not calling the woman and saying that you are not going to get any. He's just saying that those that are obedient should get first. But it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, the man tried to really make that out that Jesus was saying a bad thing. He called her a dog. No, not really. But we'll touch that. So, but she answered and said to him, no, Lord. What did it say on the screen? She said, yes, Lord. So she agrees. Yeah, let them get first. Let Dio have his cake first. It's his birthday. Amen. So she says, yes, Lord. So she agrees. Not what the gentleman was saying on the video. The gentleman in the video tried to pretend as if Jesus, she was correcting Jesus, but she agrees with Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, she agreed with Jesus. 
Amen. And she says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed on the children's crumbs. So she's saying that everyone should be fed, which is what Jesus is saying, because he says first, amen? And he said to her, because of this answer, go, the demon has gone out from your daughter. And after going back home, she found that her child laying on the bed and a demon had gone. So Jesus did heal her, like he healed everyone else. He just said, I need to heal these people first. They were waiting for five hours. You've just come, amen? So what do we understand then? We understand that the truth is that she said, yes, Lord, she agreed. She even appeals to Jesus for grace that, you know, I know it's not my turn now. I know they have to get first, but even the dogs have to get something. And she wasn't talking about a dog that is, you know, just get out of here. You kick the dog, a mingy dog on the, dog on the street. No, that word that translates dog actually means little dog, like a pet dog. It's someone that you love, someone that you cherish, amen? We're in the UK, so they, in the UK, people love their dogs, amen? The dogs sleep with them, dogs lick their face, they kiss the dog, the dog kicks the, kisses them back. You can even see it from the picture, amen? So Jesus still loves her, he's still cuddling her, he's still healing her daughter, amen? Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Thank God that he actually loves us all, amen? Okay, so I've responded to those lies. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so let's go to the next part, which is why it's so important that we know what the gospel is and we're not deceived. Amen? So, um, I have to skip. Okay, so, does anyone know, this is a test for any of the children, does anyone know what this relates to, what parable this relates to? Someone says sands, yes, and the rock, yes. So, yes, this relates to the parable about um, the man that built his house on the sand and the other man that built his house on the rock. And let's look at that. Amen. So it says this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 26, it says this. Therefore, everyone who hears my words, hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Amen. Say, I want to be the wise man. Okay, and if you're a woman, say, I want to be the wise woman. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> men don't say, I want to be the wise woman. <laughs> women say that, and men say, I want to be the wise man. So I want to be the wise person that builds his house on a rock. Verse 25 says this, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and slammed against the house, and yet it did not fall. Say, it did not fall. It did not fall, for it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears my words and does not act on them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. Amen? So it's important that we know what the gospel is so that we are like the man that built his house on the rock. Amen? That when the winds come, life hits us. Coronavirus hits us. Amen? Finances go down. That hits us. Amen? Maybe ill health hits us. Amen? But because we built our house, our faith, on the rock of Christ, we don't move. Amen? And God is so good, because this is 2,000 years ago, but his words ring true now. Look what, I've showed this before, but look what happened in China. They went and gave a developer some money to build some houses. In fact, 13 high-rise blocks. Amen? And they built these houses, and I don't know if you can see, on the third picture, it's got um, a tube. And that's what the foundations were for a 13 high building, story building. Can you imagine those little empty tubes? So it just rained one weekend. It rained for the whole weekend and the whole building came down. Thanks be to God, they were still developing the other um, buildings. So this is one of 13. Amen. So when this happened, the government came and they said, who's the developer that did this? No, 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 no. You need to take all of them down and start again with firm foundations. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, I need firm foundations. Amen? I need firm foundations because I don't want to fall down like this building. Amen? Amen. So that's the first reason why it's important for us to understand the gospel so that we don't fall. Amen. Um, Jesus reminds us, the other reason why it's important is because of this. 
is that it reminds us of who we are in Christ. Amen? So Jesus says, oh, the word of God says this. It says, therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, so Christ was risen, we know he was crucified because there's Roman crucifixions. We've seen the evidence. We've seen the tomb. Amen? Amen? So if Christ is risen or is raised, if we, um, therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God set your minds on the things that are above not on the things on the earth so um, please forgive me if you did this but we shouldn't be concerned about Primark opening on Monday we shouldn't be outside there with our tent amen at five in the morning waiting to get some new socks and some and another vest amen but we should be concerning our thing our mind on the things above it, that's what the word says to us. Verse 3 says this. For if you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God, when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then we shall be revealed with him in glory. Amen? God is saying to us that there's a better tomorrow. Where in the midst of a pandemic, and it seems really, it, you know, people have lost their jobs. People have lost loved ones. People have been in hospital. And it seems really bad. But there's, there's a better tomorrow. Amen? And if we have that foundation, we'll actually walk out with joy. Amen? That's why you can go to two funerals and they'll be completely different. One could be really mourning and the other one will be a celebration of life. I'm so blessed that I had that person as a mother. I'm so blessed that I had that grandmother. I'm so blessed that I knew that friend. I'm so blessed because they did all these things. Or, oh, oh my word. I really miss them. And it's not bad to miss them, but two different mindsets give us two different responses. And a different foundation in Christ gives us a different perspective of our life here. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Amen. Are you enjoying yourself, saints? At home, are you enjoying yourself? I have to do that. You know, I believe I'm on, it's almost like I'm on TV. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed yourself at home. Amen? Amen. Mm. Shall I do this first? Okay, let's do it. It's a lot of words, so forgive me. Amen. The other thing about why it's important to understand the gospel is that it sustains us. Meditating on God's words and gospel truths provides a root for our faith. Amen? It makes us fruitful. It feeds us, waters us, grows us, and keeps us firm through trials. Amen? Jude um, verse 17 to verse 24 says this. And it's a lot of words, but we're going to slow it down. But you, beloved, you ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18. That they were saying to you, in the last days, in the, la in the last time, there will be mockers following after their own ungodly lust. So there's going to be some people that are going to follow after their own ideas, their own beliefs, their own um, convictions. Amen? Like Trump had his own convictions. Amen? He followed after his own ungodly lust. Amen? And he caused a lot of harm in what he did. Amen? But the Bible tells us, yeah, that's going to happen. You're going to find those people. Verse 19 says this. These are the ones who cause divisions. Amen? That are worldly minded. That they are devoid. They're, they don't have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Verse 20 though. It says, but you. Turn to your neighbor and say you. Amen. Don't touch them. Coronavirus. <laughs> but you beloved. Amen? Beloved. That's that dearness again. Amen? You beloved. Building yourselves up on the most holy faith. So build yourself up on that rock. Amen? That foundation of faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit, verse 20 to 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're looking to eternal life. Amen? And have mercy on some. So that's why I love what um, the announcements that um, Michael read out. That there's frozen food. If you need it, or if you know someone that needs it, then let us know and we'll touch his road back to his church. We'll give it to you. That's exactly what Jesus is saying. Have mercy on some. Amen? 
give the church a round of applause because we're having mercy, amen? Some who are doubting, save others, snatching them out of the fire. Some people don't know that they're going off the cliff. They're just wandering around. I can't move because of the camera. But they're wandering around and then they don't realize there's a cliff right here. They're going to fall off. We have to snatch them. Amen? Amen. I watched a, um, a program the other day and um, I was watching it with a friend of mine. And in the program, they were trying to get a car seat. And so we tried to work out, did they have car seats then? <laughs> and then the next conversation was, what did we do before car seats? And I said, well, you just had your parent go like this. <laughs> So that's what we're doing to some people. We're snatching them from the fire. We're going like this so they don't hit their head. Amen? Verse 22. So have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them from the fire. And have some, and on some, have mercy with fear. So like, you're, you're so fearful. I, I, please, I don't want you to go down that route. It's going to be painful. Hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. So if there's something that we shouldn't be doing, don't do it. We actually hate to even do that. And verse 24 says this, now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling. So even us, as we do these things, God is going to protect us from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. Amen. All the tears we have on this earth, we're going to have great joy tomorrow. And to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forevermore. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. So just a few more before I finish. Amen. So we understand that the understanding of the Bible, um, the gospel is important because it sustains us. Amen. It gives us a firm foundation. And just touching on that sustaining us, I love what the Bible does here. It gives us an example of how God sustains us. And it talks about this. It says that, you know, as I said before, meditating on God's word and the gospel truths roots our faith, makes us fruitful, feeds us, waters us, grows us, and keeps us firm through trials. And the Bible gives us an example. It says, but, it says, um, um, the righteous man walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. And then it goes to verse 2. But, everyone say but. But his delight, his um, desire is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates on Tuesdays. Once a month. Once a year. Day and night. Amen. He meditates day and night. And he or she will be like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf, leaf does not wither. And whatsoever he does, prospers. Amen? Amen. It's so funny when you see these entrepreneurs, and they say, every failure has a lesson. Amen? So even when they fail, they still win, because they get the lesson. Amen? But that's what the Bible says to us. It says that everything you go for, whatsoever he does, will prosper. Amen? So we're going to be like that tree that is by the river, green and broad, because our roots are by the river. Amen? We'll be watered. We will want wither. And whatsoever we do shall prosper. Aren't you happy, saints? Amen? Let's give a little round of applause for our close. Amen. Okay. The other thing it does, um, just looking at time. So the other thing that understanding the gospel does for us is that it keeps us from sin. So, oh, oh, I didn't have it on the screen. I had it here. Oh, that's what I was trying to show you. So I'll, I'll leave it for 10 seconds. <laughs> so as it says there, it says that, um, but his delight is on the law of the Lord, and on his law does he meditate day and night. And he'll be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, um, planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Its leaf does not wither, and whatsoever he does, prospers. So we're going to be like this. We're going to be like this tree broad and green. Amen? The other thing that help comes from understanding the gospel is that it keeps us from sin. Okay. So, the gospel sanctifies us because through it, we grow in the love of our Father and we desire to please him with our life. So, as we know what our foundation is, as we meditate day and night on that foundation, it's going to keep us and allow us to love God even more. Amen? 
it allows us to even please him with our lives. Amen? And how do we know that? Well, God tells us. Romans chapter 6 says this. A lot of words, but we're going to go through it. But we have died in Christ. Again, we're dying in Christ. We believe, that also, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing, verse 9, that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. Amen? For, death, for the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. Everyone say once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Verse 11. Why does he live this life to God? So that you, you too, consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen? So we consider ourselves dead, but we're also alive in Christ Jesus. Therefore, sin is not to reign in your bodies so that you obey its lusts. And do not go presenting the parts of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead and your bodies as parts of instruments of righteousness for God. For sin, everyone say for sin, shall not have, shall not, um, have power over you. Sin shall not have power over you. Amen. For, it says here, for sin shall not be a master over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have the fruit unto holiness and everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So just believing in Christ, just having him as our foundation, it frees us from sin. Amen. The thing you wanted to do yesterday, you don't want to do it no more. Amen. Aya goes to school and her friends are, you know, they're on the phone and they're showing things that maybe she shouldn't be seeing. But suddenly she has that conviction. I'll catch you guys later. And she just goes about her business because she's not a master to the wrong, unrighteous things anymore. Isn't that true, Aya? Amen. She's nodding. She's like, yes, mom's next to me. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so got to end now. So we understand, we've responded to the lies. We understand why the gospel is important for us. It sustains us, gives us a firm foundation, frees us from sin. Okay, so what should our response be? And I'm going to ask for a scripture on the screen. Um, it should, our response should be that we praise and thank God. Amen? Thank him for sustaining us. Thank you for making us like the, um, the house built on the rock. Amen? Thank him for um, keeping us from sin. Amen? We should have a, um, just um, a joy that wants to praise God. And that's why the first song, I was so touched by that first song that we sang today. Um, can we get Romans chapter, or in fact, let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 5, and I'll close on this one. Amen. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5, and I can't even remember the verse. Let me look at my Bible. So Revelation chapter 5, and let's go to verse... I'll tell you right now. Let's go to verse 11, please. Amen. So this um, particular part of Revelations is talking about a book with the seven seals. So it's kind of like um, um, a, a prophecy of what's to come. And the seven seals in the book um, allude to something else. But it talks about someone, just in a verse before, it talks about someone coming to open this book. Amen? And there's no one holy enough to open it apart from Jesus. And it says this, Then I looked, so this is John, uh, one of the apostles. He's writing this from the Isle of Patmos. He says, Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. And they encircled the throne of God. Amen? So they encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. Next verse, please. In a loud voice, they sang, Worthy is the Lamb. We sang that song, didn't we? Amen? Worthy is the Lamb, who is slain to receive power and the wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Amen? And then they heard every creature in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and in the sea. Amen? And all of them singing, To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be bad reports. 
praise. Amen. You guys weren't sure. I said, do not be deceived. It's on the screen. Amen. Was praise and honor and glory and power sometimes, forever. And let's give the Lord a round of applause, please. Amen. So that should be our response, saints. We just have to walk in praise and honor of God. Um, most gracious, bow our heads, saints. Most gracious one and Father, I just pray that everyone um, in the church today and at home, dear Lord, that you will just give us that spirit of praise for you, dear Lord. That you will help us to be built and um, to build our faith on the rock of ages, that is Christ. That we will really understand your words, dear Lord. We'll meditate on it day and night, dear Lord. And Father God, we know when we do these things, you will sustain us. You will free us from sin. You will nourish us. You will raise us up, dear Lord. And we'll have that joy to praise you. So I just thank you for every soul that is here right now. And I pray you touch them, dear Lord. You know what they're going through. I pray you heal every hurt. You comfort them. You said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Father God in heaven, you know what people have gone through um, over the last few weeks, months, the last year. Touch their hearts, dear Lord. Comfort them. Provide for them. Sustain them, dear Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit them all into your hands, both in the church and at home, dear Lord. Father, I pray that you touch them right now. And these words will be a blessing to their soul. This I pray in Jesus' name. And